Hello everyone, we're continuing the 12 Days of Christmas with a comedy classic set around the Christmas season. Not really a Christmas movie, but we do get a Santa Claus in there. Probably one of the best Santa Clauses <laughs> in cinematic history, but it's the all-time classic Trading Places. <laughs> Darren, you saw this movie. You probably pissed yourself along with me when I first saw it. <laughs> I mean, I was very young when it came out. And, you know, I, uh, I was probably about 10 years old or something. I saw it on VHS with my family. I think um, I probably didn't understand it as well as I do today. Um, but even then, I knew that, that there was something really special about um, Eddie Murphy um, and Jamie Lee Curtis. Two uh, things about her. <laughs> As I kind of grew up, I watched it more and more and, and understood what was going on. Particularly, you know, the film's fairly straightforward, but mm -hmm. it's if you're not familiar with the stock exchange and how all that stuff works, the kind of climactic scenes of the movie, you can be stood there going, hmm, what's going on here? But um, yeah, no, I, I love it to bits. And although it's kind of of its time, and there are probably, there are a number of jokes in this film that, that don't sit well today, um, you know, I was around when it first came out, and um, it remains a, 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 a funny movie to me, but I appreciate that some people nowadays may not find it as, as funny as, as the likes of you or I, and some of our um, viewers do. I'll say it. Get over it. Okay, so <laughs> your, uh, your best character. There's so many, but you're going to have to pick one, because if you want, whoever I, you pick, I'm going to pick the other anyway. Uh, well, I, 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 I think it just be, would be wrong of me to choose in this instance. You know, you've got two actors in in Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy mm -hmm. who were at the, God, the height of their careers when this came out, and just brought their absolute A game to this movie. I think if if I if my life depended on it, then I would probably just choose Eddie Murphy by a by a gnat's chuff. Yeah, I really would. Um, you know, he obviously really young at this point, probably about 20 years old or something. He was just fantastic. When you look at some of the, the language that's used, the terminology and some of the kind of, you know, terms that, that we, you know, you just don't really see or hear that much today, and rightly so, I can't help but think that throughout this whole thing, he's having the last laugh mm -hmm. um, because he just kind of acts them all off the screen in this film. And particularly when he's, there's nothing better than Eddie Murphy breaking the fourth wall. And he does that in this film just perfectly. His comedic timing is just unbelievable. BLT. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I would have to choose um, Eddie, Worth, uh, Eddie Worthy. Eddie Murphy, who plays um, Billy Ray Valentine. I will go the opposite direction and choose his counterpart as Lewis Winthorpe, Dan, Dan Aykroyd. Uh, just because of his transition from going to this snob, down to earth person later on, and then just losing all hope at the end. And the when you see him eating the salmon as Santa, <laughs> and that beard hair is still there. And we have to say a great uh, directing job by John Landis. And then, you know, he's trying to shoot himself. He throws the gun down, and then it goes off. It's like, well, nothing could happen. Nothing else could happen. You know, that man tried to have sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, interesting, uh, you know, that they're, you know, what you're saying about about Winthorpe going to, to rock bottom. Extremes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, uh, Billy Ray's down here when it starts and Winthorpe's up here. And they both have this arc, whereas they go like that, but then meet in the middle and find this kind of happy medium that they're mm -hmm. both really comfortable with. And it was kind of nice to see. It's 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 like um you get kind of every possible extension of their characters throughout this film, um and yeah, it's a terrific movie. And John Landis, as you said before, not only is uh, uh, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd delivering their A game, so is John Landis as well. You know, right off mm -hmm. the back of uh, an American Wolf in London, he comes up with this, and it's it's just perfect, brilliant. I think the difference between between Winthorpe and Valentine actually is that. Billy Murphy 
Billy Murphy's character. <laughs> Billy Murphy? Billy Murphy. Billy <laughs> Billy Ray Valentine or Eddie Him Murphy. Him too. Yeah, both, all three of them. <laughs> um, they, he still keeps his tendencies from when he was homeless. Yeah. And he, he found that joint, you know, and, and he took it, he put it as well. He still went in the back. So he still kept that, you know. But yeah. Winthorpe, he can't stand being alive. But Eddie's been that way. He was in Winthorpe's condition when yeah. Mortimer and uh, Randolph found him. Um, so he, it's just that Dan Aykroyd's character cannot, I guess, connect or assimilate to being poor and being trash. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's why I picked him. Um, so next, who is your worst character? There's not, there's really none, but, um, but I, I did pick one. Okay. I'm not saying it's a poor performance or anything like that, but just within the kind of spectrum of this movie, Winthorpe's girlfriend, Penelope is okay. probably the, the character that sort of Annoying. drinks on me the most. Yeah. And there's that particular moment where she's at that kind of country club with her friends and they're all singing around the piano, and it's it's all it's doing is kind of de de demonstrating the differences between the lifestyles that they have, um, and yeah, that's kind of um, a, a real sort of it's like nails on a chalkboard with those mm. guys singing around the piano. Um, so I would say yeah, Penelope is probably my least favorite character in this. I'm I'm going to agree with you, but I'm going to choose uh, those four assholes around the piano singing a cappella. <laughs> Zeta car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With four points, just leave and do yourselves a favor. Man, how about if I punch you in the f***ing face? That's what I would have said. It was a heroin. It was PCP. <laughs> he still has to correct them. <laughs> yeah, those two are just like, you never see them afterwards. You know, I would like to uh, have, you know, uh, Ophelia with Wimthorpe at the end. Mm. You know, and they're driving by there and the Mercedes going... Hi, you know, and she slaps him or something like that, or uh, you know, saying, "Oh, you know, I'm so sorry. I wish uh, I, I could have believed you, but it's just that she's two faced and only thinking about yeah, you know, yeah. money and her status, status, yeah, yeah, yeah bitch." Yeah. Um, your best line? There's too many. There's absolutely yes. too too many. I'm gonna pick one. Okay. Um, but also, uh, my funniest moment in the film is also another line. So I'm gonna leave that to later okay. on. Um, but <laughs> there's, there's a bit at the end, and this isn't delivered by any of the leads or anything like that. It's delivered by Don Amici. Um, and it's the bit at the end when all the stocks and everything are going, you know, everything's crashing for them. Not going their way. Not going their way at all. And uh, well, I'm trying to remember which one it is now. The, it's, it's, it's the Ralph Bellamy Duke. Um, he starts having a heart attack. Randolph. And, uh, Randolph, and he collapses on the floor, and one of their <laughs> aides turns around and says, oh my God. your brother's not well. We better call an ambulance. Fuck him! <laughs> <laughs> now, now, ladies and gentlemen, that is also my best line, but you have to, you have to realize something about Don Amici. That is the only time he has ever swore on camera. <laughs> The only time he hated doing it, didn't he? And it's only the one take they got, and he said, "I would never. I'm not doing it again." <laughs> and he does it with such venom as well. <laughs> um, he really lashes out because he's just in the middle of this rant. Uh, you know, all he's concerned about is just saving his uh, his finances and, and fortune. Yeah, his fortune. Yeah, <laughs> and he just kind of snaps and goes, F "Him." <laughs> he doesn't even look at him. He looks at the guy who was part of the commission board, and. He's like, what's your brother? And he's like, and he points to him, though. He goes, F him. Like, he knows he's there. <laughs> I, I demand an investigation. This is an outrage. Mortimer, your brother. F him. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot laugh. If there's one part of this movie that is going to make you laugh every time, but you've heard it so many times, it is that line. It is, yeah. it is Don Amici going crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, but she could also throw in there, you know, that's because you're a very white-looking motherfucker. <laughs> it's not so. What do you say? It's not so cool being a jive turkey so close to Thanksgiving. <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> I could say we could. You and I can go back, just like airplane. You and I could talk about it. But yeah, yeah. Your worst fun. line. Now there isn't really a worst line in this film. Um, 
However, we have to acknowledge this, there are a lot of slurs and, 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 and language that's used in this that, that aren't really acceptable uh, in today's world. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I don't feel the need to apologize for that because the movie is of its time. And, um, you know, it, it's whilst Frank and I are old enough to remember it probably when it first came out, um, you know, attitudes change over the years. Um, we can't rewrite history. The film no. is what it is. Yeah. And, you know, there isn't one person who's a fan of this film who didn't laugh at some of the, the more kind of colourful moments of this and the, the more sort of, um, let's say, taboo moments nowadays. Um, so, you know, I think we just acknowledge the fact that that's, that kind of stuff's in there. Um, and, you know, that's, that's probably, by today's standards, the worst parts of this movie. The, uh, and particularly the... Uh train ride yeah and the yeah. cabin scene yeah, yeah that's it, whatever is saying in there it's a mockery but just like Derek said it's of its time mm -hmm. even if it, if it wasn't so offensive back then because the people who wrote it and the people who said it the people who acted in it didn't find offensive and as people say now comedy is comedy and if you take away laughter in the world and if you can't make fun of yourself and, and to an extent, certain people, Darren and I make fun of each other all the time. And we, we, it just rolls off our back because it's not meant to be hurtful. It's to, uh, how can I put it? It's to, it's to show the ignorance of some people and make it fun of those ignorances. And that's, that's the way we should be thinking is taking a word or taking a situation. And if it, either though it seems, you know, hurtful, Take it away, take away from it, make fun of it. In this way, it's not hurtful anymore, and people can live their lives. Hmm. I mean, it's it's only the best way I can see it and put it myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for me, moving on, the most sentimental moment is probably Ophelia taking care of of Winthorp, which she calls her <laughs> investment. But apparently, I wish somebody would take care of me, topless. <laughs> I would perk right up. I'm feeling better, <laughs> Ophelia. <laughs> no, you know, that scene aside, which, you know, I agree with you, is a great moment. Um, but she does put in a terrific performance in this film. Um, yeah. You know, she's real. She's, oh, she you know. really did flex her acting chops and, 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 and demonstrate that, you know, she was becoming a leading lady in Hollywood. Yeah. And, and um, I th I, I, it was a nice departure for her from the likes of, you know, Terror Train and Prom Night and oh, Christ. all that kind of stuff. The, say Halloween. Know. Can you say something that's, uh, you know, really up to par instead of Terror Train and Prom <laughs> Night? For well, no, sake? what I mean is that, you know, she'd done Halloween and we loved her for that and she did The Fog, but she was kind of like, she was just a scream queen Type for cast. hire for yeah, a few she years. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and she wanted out of it all. And, you know, she picked a, a fantastic role because it... It wasn't just a female role, a, a token female role. It was a really strong, assertive, um, leading role. And, and yeah. she, she took it on. She was only, what, 23, 24 years old or something. Uh, and she, she grabbed the bull by the horns and put in a great performance. You're a prostitute. <laughs> like, you didn't know that? <laughs> but because Winthorpe was sheltered. He never had any of this stuff around him. Um, but yeah, that that's for me is her taking care of Winthorpe. As he said, as she said, it was her investment, but I think she actually cared for him a little yeah. bit, just a little yeah. bit. Um, your funniest moment. Funniest moment. And then there are so many in, in, in this whole, in this film, but for me, you know, with all the hilarity that's going on in this, in this movie, the funniest moment for me, um, actually doesn't come from any of the lead characters in the film. It comes from um, the great Paul Gleason. Mm -hmm. um, is this your moment as well? I don't know. Is no, it, no, no. Okay. Continue, okay. <laughs> and he's the the um, investigator that the Dukes hire to figure out what's going on, what's what's going on, and report back to them. There's a moment where Clarence Beeks is the character's name, mm -hmm. is reporting back to the Dukes, and. <laughs> Let's have a look at the clip because it it does. I, I'm not going to do it justice at all, but let's have a look at the clip. I anticipate penetration and acquisition at 2100 hours tomorrow. Hold on. Fuck off. 
<laughs> Guy has no choice but to turn around. Yeah, it? yeah. It's a woman, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She has no choice but to walk away. It's fantastic. It, it just comes out of nowhere. And it's so, so cool and calm. and <laughs> But full of venom as well, you know. It's, just, it's like he says it every day. Fuck off. You know, just... <laughs> And it's her face. She just goes. <laughs> <laughs> and as a kid watching this, that always used to really make me laugh. And it's kind of stayed with me ever since. Uh, to the point that when I, every time I watch this movie, I wait for that moment in anticipation. And it's a stupid moment. But it's one that just kind of really kind of, you know, I just find it hilarious. Uh, my funniest moment. I can't wait for it every time I see it or as I watch this movie. That's the one part I'm, I'm waiting for. And that is when Lewis Winthor breaks into Duke and Duke's Christmas party as the Santa Claus. And there's so much stuff that he's doing. He's taking uh, advantage of all the food that's out there. As we said before, the salmon with the hair is still in there. And he's taking a big bite and he stuffs it in uh, to his uh, Santa outfit uh, he's planting drugs. I caught him red-handed. Here he is. And <laughs> he has the gun, and he's going like this on top of the table, and everyone's ducking in motion. Put that phone down. Hello, security. Merry Christmas. Valentine figures out, you know, it was a bet. Uh, they were going to throw everyone out and not even bring Winthor back in. Uh, and Valentine's... Goes out there, sees Winthorp, and says, "says Lewis." <laughs> like, he doesn't even give a shit. The dog pisses on him outside, <laughs> and then it rains on him. You know, the, 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 and the even gun, the gun doesn't want to work with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how much worse can you be? Yeah, you know, yeah. a dog pisses on you. You know, that's just that's the lowest of the low. I actually been pissed on by a dog, and that's what uh, this dog thought of me. <laughs> you mean that else... the dog came up and just pissed on you for no yep, reason? Yep, I was actually his. I was actually his. That's all they do. Is <laughs> it's it's. I was I was taking care of this dog at a at a shelter, and uh, he was a nice dog. You know, I, he finally got out of his shell because he was terrified of being in a new place, and it took two weeks of me working with him in order yeah. for him to feel comfortable and i'm cleaning up the stuff around his uh, pen and on the outside all the messes that the dogs make and i look down and on my i, I hear something on my boot and it's that little fucker pissing on my boot <laughs> and that's the lowest of the low and i said to myself well i guess you feel comfortable around me that you're taking a piss on me <laughs> it's the lowest of the low so that's my funniest moment is yeah and i know i agree with you claus it, it's it's a it's a great moment. It, you know, I didn't mention my sent, most sentimental moment there, but that is my most sentimental moment. Oh, too, him is. at the bottom. Him at the yeah, bottom. him hitting rock bottom, and 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 Billy Ray finding out that this whole thing was a bet, and then Billy Ray going after um, Winthorpe to try and bring him back um, in, into the fold to try and plot their revenge. Um, but yeah, the the sight of Dan Aykroyd eating that salmon through his beard is just one that stayed with me forever and he's just like tearing it apart with his teeth and eating bits of beard and yeah it's it's, it's just horrible it really is but yeah a really sentimental moment and a, a movie that dis, despite all its kind of faults nowadays has a lot of heart it really yeah. does and and you said it wasn't really a christmas movie i think it i think the christmas spirit that they all experience in this film helps it um, and helps the decisions that they make. Um, so yeah, so you know, it's it's one of my favourite comedies of all time. You know, and, and regardless of as we said before, the, the the downsides to this film nowadays, I it, it still will remain there. Yeah, I agree with you. It's also kind of, if you think about it, a little bit of a revenge movie. Yeah, um, absolutely. A, a twisted game being played. You could take this movie, and there's people on the internet that do this, where they may take movies that were kind of comedies and twist them, uh, especially in the trailers that they make, and twist them into horrors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire yeah. is like a yeah. horror movie. You know? Yes. She's yeah. coming to get you. Hello, dear. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. <laughs> they could do this with Trading Places. Uh, For sure. I was going to pick, you know, going, going back to... Uh, uh, 
Jamie Lee Curtis. I was going to pick her as my favorite character, but she's only had one scene that was my favorite, so I can't do that. <laughs> um, but it was that's but it's an iconic scene. It's an iconic scene for horror fans all over the world uh, to see what Michael almost had and what this guy already seen. <laughs> Or maybe, uh, or or what's his name, Jimmy has, has seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we're moving on very quickly with 12 Days of Christmas. I hope you enjoyed this episode because Trading Places is, as Darren said, a Christmas movie, if you don't believe it, but it's focused around the Christmas season. Um, and we also like to thank uh, you guys for coming along with us because, you know, we want to have fun. And we're doing some comedies that I think everybody enjoys during Christmas. And on that note... Ho, 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 and all that fun stuff. As always, stick to the roads. And the best of luck. Look at the escargot.